Spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of stuff, the thrill of victory, and the agony of defeat, the human drama of messing around with stuff. This is Casa de McBride Chronicles. Well, everybody, welcome back to the show. We're going to see what Andy has to say in just a minute. Some of the history of the Lake House, and in the later years, the Lake Land, read by Andy. 1978. I am pretty sure Mr. Boyke told me that they bought the lot with his parents owning the other half this year. It was bought with in mind that it was a place where his family and Grandpa and Grandma Boyke could go and relax. 1990 to 1992. Summer of 1990 was the first time Boykey would be out there. I remember Donnie Mall, my friend from New York, Mark Singer, and Tim Williamson all went. Being that we were supervised, we just swam and that was it. Also, I think that was the same summer the Boykey family and I went out there because Boykey bought a 1970 Challenger. We tore it all apart and salvaged a few things for the Challenger he was restoring. FYI, it is 34 years later and it still isn't restored. The Lake House was the place for horny teenage boys looking to touch a bare breast. Not sure if he'll ever acknowledge this, but he had the key to it copied and he gave Elvis one. Yeah, Boykey, you know it's true. A big song at the time was Love Shack, and so we dubbed it that whenever we referred to it. It also was a great place to drink a lot of beer. A constant theme for a very long time. It didn't matter what time of the year it was. We had a house with a wood stove, bedrooms, running water, a full kitchen, and a bathroom. Sure, the house reeked of mildew built on the ground, but to us, it smelled of freedom! I vividly remember us borrowing a keg of green beer from high school. The facility had a St. Patrick's party and one of us noticed it at the end of the school day. So we put it into the trunk of one of our cars and being it was still cold weather, took it to the lake house and put it in the lake, chill it while we waited till Friday. We went out there and drank all the green beer we could handle. Ha! I still remember our friend John B. aka Jellybean sitting on a dock with a huge cup of green beer with a grin from ear to ear. When it got warmer and we couldn't put the keg in the water, we simply moved a few shelves in the refrigerator and made the keg fit in there. We had a functioning refrigerator that kept the beer cold. God, this country is great. There are only three rules at the lake house. Number one, don't die. Number two, don't sit in the old rocking chair he was breastfed in. And number three, no glass of any kind. One time, we had a hammock set up and we wanted to see how many people it would hold before it ripped apart. I think we had six kids on it before it finally broke. 95% of the time, we had campfires down there, either for warmth or ambience. One night, our friend Jimmy E was so drunk he freaking fell into the fire. Now he was not hurt at all, but the shock of it sobered him up real quick. After we all made sure he was okie dokie, we all busted out laughing out of control. During the summer months, a bunch of us from school and people we deemed cool from our jobs would go out there and just chill in the lake. It was in a flight path of incoming jets that were landing at Charlotte Douglas Airport. We would just marinate in the inner tubes and look up at the planes and talk about our futures. Good times. A group of us like maintaining it. Matter of fact, Scott Fossey and I would go down there and do some stuff like trimming and mowing and then make an excuse to take a break to drink ice cold beer we had chilling in the refrigerator. This was before every imaginable area by a body of water was developed. So it was at the end of the gravel, whoops, sorry, 
I mean dirt road. Anyone wanting to try this, please, for the love of God, don't. One of our friends drove an old 1969 Ford Thunderbird with a freaking huge 429 cubic inch V8. To everyone reading this, who was not in the cars, that it was a huge V8, and matter of fact, it was the biggest engine Ford made that year. Anyways, we thought it would be a great idea to have someone hold a rope while in the trunk with one of us holding the other end on a freaking go-kart. Tim would stop on the gas and someone would hold the, the rope with one hand and the other one stirring the freaking go-kart. Oh, and did I mention that the go-kart had a single strap around one of the wheels as a brake? It is a wonder one of us was not killed. Imagine a huge Ford Thunderbird going down a dirt road with a kid in the trunk holding a rope that the other kid on the go-kart was holding and steering. Bad idea, I know, but it was fun at the time. Oh, and Mark Singer still holds the record for going 55 miles an hour. 1992 to 1998. We all sort of went our separate ways with college stuff. I went to local community college and was sort of in charge of maintaining it. In a way, I nominated myself because I kind of like mowing the lawn and raking. Boyk and I remained closed while he went to Virginia Tech three hours away. Thanks to him, I had a bunch of new friends and we continued to use the lake house as our social gathering place. Every chance he got, he and his friends would come down to the lake. He would say, When you see Joe's Mustang, make it right onto our road, Mill Pond Lane. FYI, Joe's Mustang was an actual store. Some of his friends thought it was, <laughs> thought it was a guy named Joe with a Mustang in the front yard. Ha! In the summer of 93, he was still dating the girl he knew in high school. At one of the parties, Cops came. Shocker, huh? Ha! I am. I'm. St I. <laughs> I am giggling to type this. Well, the cop was walking around, <laughs> around seeing all the underage drinking going on, and was looking for the owner of the property to give the "break this party up now" speech. Went into the house, and there was Pokey Buck naked, <laughs> and the cops asked. Boy, why are you naked? One of the greatest lines ever! At one party, there were a bunch of our old high school buddies there. The house across the cove had a fiberglass life-size cow. Well, I remember Pat Polking and a few other guys swimming over and getting it. We spent the rest of the night taking turns riding it. I remember Carlton Hoover pushing it through the door and riding it like it was bucking and he was a cowboy at the rodeo holding on for dear life. A few weeks later, Boyke and our friend Anna Rose tied it up to my mailbox with hopes it would fire up my dad. Well, Boyke, Big Ron calmly told me the next morning that there was a fiberglass cow tied to up to our mailbox. We thought about what we could do about returning it, and that evening, Dad and I drove my Nissan truck, also known as the Black Widow, to your lake house and put it on the dock for the owners to see it and reclaim it. We then went and got ice cream. Ha! Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Being that I lived in town, I was in charge of returning the keg. My brother's friend from college, Ann, told me years later that the first time she met me was when I pulled up to my house with an empty keg in the back of my truck looking like death. I was probably coming back from one of those lake house parties. We still talk about it when we see each other to this day. It is when Boogie brought down one of his new friends, who I did not know. He was a really tall guy with a huge Art Garfunkel type white man afro. Well after smoking left handed cigarettes for hours, he comes out to the dock and proclaims to all of us that he is an expert knee borer. I was like, who is this clown? So you know, Boogie hit a boat by then. Not a good one, but we did not care. It was a boat, dude. 
Anyways, so he tells all that he will be extra cool by doing a dock start, which is when you start on dry land and ski wake or kneeboard onto the water. Now mind you, he's doing all this while looking all professional in a wetsuit. He straps into the board and instructs Boyke to drive out so there is no slack in the rope. Then the magic happened. He gave the call for Boyke to hit! And when he did, Todd went head first into the <laughs> Todd went head first into the water and held onto the rope for a few seconds. This caused him to be dragged farther out. So you know he was still underwater when this all happened. We all died laughing, and when he finally came up, he swam back to shore and walked into the house. I do not think I saw him again for the whole weekend. It was the funniest moment ever. <laughs> we interrupt this program to bring you a very random thought from Andy. Speaking of Boogie's crappy boat, at one point, Fossey, Joe Walker, and I took it to a bar slash restaurant, T-Bones, on a lake. It had an outdoor bar and it was packed. We were all too cool because we had a boat, dang nabbit. Where was I? Oh yeah, we docked it right next to a really nice one and would talk to some super hot girls and tell them, to look out at the dock and check out what we came over in. They always pointed to the nice one and asked us, is that the one you came over in? We all shook our heads no and pointed at the crappy boat next to it. That's our boat right there, right next to it. Needless to say, we did not impress them, but we didn't care. We had a boat, dude. We also utilized the boat to hone our water skiing skills. Sure, it had a freaking styrofoam block we found somewhere as a seat, and the back of the boat had to be <laughs> had to be fortified by metal beams from an old power line that Mr. Williamson had lying around to hold it together. But it allowed us to water ski naked sometimes and be cool by driving it over to a party. Missy's mom lived in the same cove. And when she was out of town, we would always show up. Looking back, it's funny how that worked. We were totally rad because we had a boat and we docked it and proceeded to claim that we were pirates and walk around with a shirt wrapped around our torso like a banana hammock. During this time, Bookie started throwing a 4th of July party. He would have new friends we made recently Shout out to Anna Rose, kids he met in college, old high school friends, family, or just anyone he knew to come out to the lake, camp out, drink cheap beer, and marinate old truck tire inner tubes out in the lake. Cripes! He didn't care who it was, all is welcome was his motto. In 1993, we were commissioned by his parents to replace Top the Dock. He brought his girlfriend at the time, who I affectionately called Ragdoll, Ugh. and his parents came out too. It was lunchtime and like 30 years ago, there was not much out in Lake Wild except for a KFC. Well, they started advertising a few months prior that they were serving chicken wings. Being from near Bethel, New York, this sparked my curiosity. So I proclaimed to Mr. and Mrs. Boyke to get lots of wings. Well, they did, and I had like two or three of them because they were so disgusting. I sure hope their wings are better now. Anyways, the Boykey clan has never let me forget that. But I do not blame them. They wasted money on wings that I deemed nasty. Therefore, I only ate two. Side note, I directly think this event began the downward spiral of KFC. 
One time, Boyke, Anna Rose, and I were chilling on his recently bought boat trailer while the party raged on, and we all were wondering who were some of the people there. It was a cornucopia of humidity. Another time, Anna Rose, Boyke, and I were cruising in my new, well, new to me, 1977 Mastercraft. After a few days of heavy rain, you see, when there is a ton of rain, the lake rises very fast, and things like floating docks lose their anchor as they float in the middle of the lake. And there was a new floating dock just for the picking. The one we had, if I recall, we found that one too, looked as beat as Tina Turner after a night with Ike. So we tied the new one up to my boat and dragged it back. Never mind, it was on the other side of the lake and I could only do one mile an hour. It took us four hours to get back where we had a new floating dock. I am pretty sure this happened at the same party. I like to set up my sight right by the water so I could wake up looking at a great view. At the time, I was driving a Ford Ranger. There were a bunch of people around it just having a good time. There was one kid leaning on it. I am sure he was a really nice guy, but I was not a fan of this. He asked me, are you having a good time? And I snapped back, I'd be having a better time if you stopped leaning on my truck. Everyone got silent and could not believe I said that. I kind of knew I was going to get a beat down, but I was cool with it. He lost his composure and was about to kick my butt when a few others restrained him. My friend Jeff was there and he witnessed the whole thing. He still brings it up when I see him. In the summer of 1995, we had a really, really bad thunderstorm and Boyke informed me that a huge tree had fallen in the house. Mr. Boyke, Mike, and Suzanne Massey, the girl I was messing around with at the time, and I went out there to survey the damage. For Mr. Boogie, it was a loss. Plus, he and the missus always were not huge fans of sketchy building. She, in particular, was not big on the musty smell it always had because it was built in the ground. So they decided to just tear down and just have an empty lot. So, they collected the insurance money and paid Boogie and I to tear it down. So when he was on Christmas break, we did a little, then on spring break, we tore and burned the rest down. FYI, demolishing stuff rules. We did not have a house, but we still had the lake property. We just had to set up tents now. No biggie. For the rest of the 90s, he threw some great parties. A party that will always stick out as one of the best ever was the July 4th, 1998 one. I had my boat, a steady girlfriend, and more new friends. This was one of the first years I met Thompson. He is the smartest man I know. He freaking knows everything. He drove his dad's huge Dodge van, and instead of taking my boat to see the fireworks, we all piled into the van. 2002 to 2007. From 1999 to 2001, I was in Wisconsin. I really don't like talking about it, but if you need to know the 411, you are in luck, because back in 2010, I wrote it all down. Heck, I loved the lake so much that I freaking named my dog after it. So in 2002, I moved down to some apartments in Lake Wiley, and thanks to my future sister-in-law, I had a super duper nice boat. Woohoo! I was not even a mile away from Lake Land, and only two miles away from the boat ramp to put it in. On a side note, I would hold the boat down the ramp with my truck, put my bike in the boat, put the boat in the lake, drive it over to Lakeland, dock it, and ride my bike back to the ramp to get my truck. Dudezillas! I headed down to a science. On another side note, if you ever want to see a great verbal fight between a man and a woman, just hang out at the boat landing. I saw some great fights there. Man in the boat. Go straight back in. Go straight in. No. Don't turn the wheel. Woman in the truck backing into the water. 
Dan, stop yelling at me. Man, pull out and try it again. This time, just go straight back in. Woman, what did you say? Straighten it up? Man, damn it, Susan. Back straight in. To show you what a great guy Mr. Boykey was, he would pay me to mow the grass down at Lakeland. He also paid me to clean his office. He knew I was coming back to Charlotte with my tail between my legs. And with those little things he did, he made it easier for me. God, I miss him. Okie dokie, enough of me whining. Being I lived so close to Lakeland, after work, I would drive my bike over to it and do yard work with the anticipation of the 4th of July party, breaking up gumballs and working out all my frustrations as some people at work, Angela G, I'm looking at you, caused me. I knew that July 4th was going to happen and it never disappointed. In 2004, some old friends came down, Mr. and Mrs. Williamson. If you don't know, Mr. Wilson was never too shy to say what was on his mind. I told him I was dating a girl named Amber, and he replied with a big grin, What? She a stripper with that name? I told her what he said when she got there, went right up to him and said, What? So you saying I can't be a stripper? FYI, I told that story at his memorial service and got people who knew him well to laugh out loud. Like I mentioned before, beer was a constant theme for a very long time and we did our part to recycle. Oh hell, who am I kidding? We put all the cans in one barrel to make it easier to date the scrapyard and get money. We would float out in the cove with a cooler of beer. When the beer was empty, we would fill the can full of water in an attempt to throw it in the barrel we had on the shore. I think through the years, there were three successful attempts. I know I never made it. Matter of fact, I sliced my finger and had to have my friend Mary Ann bandage it up for me. She cleaned it all up with a cigarette hand from her mouth. Classic. One year, Jeff, yes, he lived in a freaking teepee, and my old college roommate Dave and I got a floaty buoy. It was the last night we were there that year. We all piled in my boat to watch the fireworks, and on our way back, we noticed a floaty buoy in the middle of the cove. I dropped everyone off at Lakeland, and we went back and got it. That thing was a heavy sucker, too. We brought it back and posed with it like it was a huge trophy. I had so many good memories there. I had my friend Ann paint an old picture for me of it and it is in my kitchen. Now I need DPS just to see where I am when I go down there. So much has changed and it's all built up now. Eventually, the boogies kind of gave part of the land to their son Matthew. He and his family built a house down there. I only have been there once when Wally, my dog, went to doggy heaven and her mom was so sweet to send me some of her ashes. I made it a point to spread some of the ashes here at Casa David Bride, and while having to listen to Matthew's first wife blabber non-stop, I went to Lincoln and spread the rest of the rashes there. In conclusion, I had a blast going down memory lane, which was awesome, and I know I forgot stuff, and I apologize. These are things that I remember, so if you Think of anything different, any other good memories that I forgot, feel free to put them in the comments of this video or email me, okay?
Will Andy ever stop getting random tools that have less than 1% of ever being used? Will he ever not drink a cup of coffee while he's working on something? Will he ever answer the question, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Will he take an afternoon nap? Tune in for another thrilling episode of The Casa de McBride Chronicles to find out more. Ladies and gentlemen, Andy has left the building. Good night. He will always be the king no matter what.